Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I get a lot of comments from you asking for some basic roses. Now I do those quite a bit uh, and I especially do it in my online introduction courses, my beginning courses. So to help you out, what I'm going to do is pull one of the lessons. This is um, a beginning basic rose on from our S105 online course on jansenartonline.com. Okay, this is, I use a six color set. I'm going to use basically a sheer technique and what I call a 221 painting of the rose. So you can maybe see it a little bit different than some of the other roses that you do. I do a lot of different kinds of them. So to say, do a basic rose is sometimes kind of, it's kind of different because I use different types of techniques. But this will hopefully help you out, okay? And uh, don't forget to click like right down there click like and we'll we'll do some more of these for you coming up real soon okay all right enjoy the video hi everyone welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio we're going to continue uh, some of the studies that we're showing here and uh, painted simply and like I said in so many things there are a lot of ways in which I advance painted simply and I use a lot of different techniques and in this particular class we're showing you a few of those techniques that I want you to concentrate on before you move into some more advanced lessons. Now what I want to do is I want to show you how to paint just a simple rose. Let's just go through some of the stuff, some of the techniques that I've shown you, some of the color uh, mixing that I've shown you and let's just apply some of those uh, techniques right here. Let's paint a simple white rose and, and uh, if we have time we'll paint another rose after that. All right. So here's my board. My board I prepped with some medium white with just a little bit of gray. So you just add a little black and white to it here. Um, make sure you have your value scale out next to you here. And you can see my background is right up here between a 7 and an 8. It's right up in here. It's not down here where it's real dark. It's right between a 7 and an 8. Matter of fact, you, once you print over these uh, value scales and stuff, you can I mean, print these. You can fold them over like this to hold that right next to it so you can see that a lot uh, a lot clearer. And you can see it's right between those two right in there as far as value. So now I use that value scale all the time. I use that value scale to help me paint up and down. Remember, I try to find no more than two uh, jumps at a time. And I can use all kinds of de uh, techniques, halftone techniques, my finger, my sheer technique to create those medium values. Okay. So let's go in here. Let's take a, a white rose. White is really kind of a, a, a gray color. So I have my colors out here, my six color set, my naphtha red light, my Hansa yellow, phthalo blue, black, and red violet. And I put the red violet way over here because this is my cool color. I like to separate it from my warm color. This is the warmest color. This is the coolest color. And like I showed in some of the other videos, this is how we control temperature in the, in the painting. So I can use, I can make any kind of gray. Gray can come from a number of different things. I like to sometimes just take all of my colors, mixing them together and make uh, a gray. If it looks a little bit to the red side, you can add a tiny bit more yellow, tiny, tiny bit of the blue in there. And you can see that grays that right back out again here too. So the opposite of, of red is a, of the reddish color on the color wheel is a green so I just add I make a green from a yellow and a blue and that will gray out just a little bit more and so if it looks too green I add a little bit of my red to that and if I added just too much of that then I go just a touch more to my blue and to my yellow and that makes beautiful gray see how that just gets beautiful gray colors in there that makes that'll make a nice beautiful rose let's add just a bit of water to that so I have a little cap of water out here I also in, in a lot of other techniques we show you working with extender and uh, I'm not going to work with that today but uh, using extender I also show techniques with mister bottles and all kinds of stuff so you have some of those things out there make sure you have yourself a couple of paper towels out here also to help wipe off any excess paint after some palette mixing now let's go in there to a rose. A rose is just a circle. So here I have a color that's very close, a little bit darker. Remember acrylics dry about one value darker. So it's a little darker than my background there. Just like that. And I can, I can start that out, that circle. That's a basic rose. Now what I do is I 
we still have that extender, let's just use water. And what I do is I divide this up into its three main circles. So it will have here the center of the rose, which would be one circle, the bottom of the bowl here, right in this area here, which would be another circle. So you have one circle, two circles, three circles, which the third circle lets you paint your reaching petals here. So any time that I start to think shadows, I start to think cool. So I slide over to my cooler colors here, and I like the red violet. It's really cool, but I don't want to go any more than than two values down when I first apply this color. If you're using extender and stuff later on, yes, you can. But So if I'm up here right about a seven or six or a seven, I want to get right down here towards a five maybe right in here, and that's a good color here to start out with. And I'll put this cooler red color here, not too dark, here onto the back of this. Now sometimes I'll just take my finger here and immediately shear that out, uh, just like that to create that little bit of a shadow there or our softness or the medium value or you can put a half tone like I showed you in the half tone lessons here's the bottom of the bowl this is the bottom of the bowl right here boom that that shadowing goes in right there now if I want to soften it I can shear it I can use that shear technique I can come up and I can just mix in some of that base color of that rose and create a half tone there and soften that out as well just by going like that and we're both sheer and that both to create that softness let's put a little bit of that up here to soften that back edge right like that so uh, if I want more contrast to the rose I can now go darker so this is the basic shadowing concept of the rose that I use the three circles I divided it up into its three circles uh, I sometimes like to go a little darker, so that red violet is down here about a two or three as it gets down in that value. So now that I have my five here, I can go all the way down towards that red violet and push that on. Let's push a little bit darker, a little deeper dark, and, and I just curve the brush up and let it, let it stop up there. Don't go all the way. You can push to create the shear, to create that those intermediate values in there. That gives you a little darker color, a little more contrast. Let's keep that right down in here into the deeper, darker part of our shadow. And one of the things that you have to establish visually for you here is where is my light source? So I'm going to bring the light in from this direction right up here and down to this direction here. And so my light's going to be here, which means my cooler colors will be down here onto the cooler shadow side, the warmer colors up here, up onto the warmer light side, okay? Now, many times what I do is in the Mastering Rose series and stuff, as I say, you take some of this color, let's thin it out with some water, and let's just lightly just wash over the edge of this rose right here and create a complete light side and shadow side to the rose. Now if you want to soften that slightly, pinch wipe your brush. You can even rinse your brush out, some of that color out of your brush. Go back, pick up your your uh, light color of your rose here and just pull some of that through here just like that and that will help you soften that so you can get a intermediate light tones right there like that back through. But I like this movement. See how everything I'm moving here is in the round. That's very important for your rose, is keeping that movement there uh, into the round. All right, so here is my here's my base of this. I want to start petaling my rose, so I'm going to go a little bit lighter. So I'm up here about a six or seven or so, six mostly. I want to go up here towards an, an eight or so. Uh, I got a little bit too much color right there into my brush, so I'm just going to take some of that back out. Let's just keep that right in here. Let's push push this in towards an eight. One of the things I do first, and I keep it kind of kind of off to the side. I mean, you can, I I do what I I don't side load it, but I just push the color heavy up onto one little edge, and that's the edge I turn up. So the color's all the way across, but you can see it's quite heavy onto one side. And I'll use that side, and I'll draw the front edge of the of the first little C stroke of the rose. Now. In the drawing of the rows, you realize these are medium size. These are small little petals in here. The big ones are out here. 
Now, sometimes I immediately go in and just shear that just like that, just to soften that edge and that effect. And sometimes it burbles out a little bit and you let that happen. That becomes more naturalistic to your rose. Maybe I take a little bit of color, maybe even drop it down in value just a little bit and put just a, a little movement or small little C's to the other side there, just like that. Lots of ways to do it. I could paint this down a little bit and put in a half tone. There's a lot of different ways to do it to make your rose look really pretty. I'm going to build this up a little bit more. Drop this down. So I definitely have a light side to my rose. Then I'm just going to push it just around those edges there just to create that little bit of softness there. So I put that color on and just push it. Just push it. Press press pretty good and push it. Or you could come in like this and drop down towards a, a you know a medium tone and push that in there like that that's right between those right between your base and this one right here that would be called a half tone and put that on and do that as well let's take some of that little half tone so it's not quite as light as our front you can see it right here not quite as light and let's just come in here like this and push a little bit of light into smaller little strokes here into the rose just to create some movement then maybe we can touch into a little bit of that light and make a a few little smaller smaller the key word there is smaller little touches and just kind of touch the edges of them there to soften some of that out how much you do how much you leave to a stroke in there like that that's up to you that's your your statement of your rose Okay. I always, I mean, I always vary them. So I don't have a specific technique for, you know, paint seven little petals into the center there. I don't do that. I'm always, always working a bit. And sometimes if I feel I've played too much, I'll come back and pick up a little bit of my dark and go right back through that too to keep that dark, you know, movement in there. And you can you can go back and forth. You try not to play too much, but you can go back and forth to create some of that little movement. And that's kind of pretty there. Get some different colors going in there. It's kind of pretty. You can, while you're playing with that, you can take some of that and push that up here. Now, this is my cool side. This is my warm side. And maybe I want to take my red here a little bit warmer to the warm side. So I'll add just a little bit. And let's just warm that side with a little red. And this is how you would really paint a pink rose. You'd want that temperature to slide from warm down in here into the cool. But anyway, let's keep going here. Let's uh, take a, a little bit more light color here. And I can leave a bit of that red in there. This is where I love the brush modeling here. And I'm going to go up in value just a bit more. You know, up towards an 8, towards a 9, because I already have that one there. And that's where I can do a larger petal here and set that little bit lighter color. to could go just a touch lighter. And it's I'm painting with a lot of paint here. See, I'm painting with a lot of paint. Let's push that in there. That gives a, a nice little second uh, uh, petal there. Let's just push that a little bit here. To create that and I don't always push in the bowl of the round but sometimes I do I like to push in the round shape of the bowl I'm gonna go back down just a bit here and just add a little bit of that down here little curve strokes but notice how they're a, a touch bigger than what they were just a few minutes ago back here so as I go down the rows I make my strokes a little bigger and a little bigger Sometimes I'll add a smaller little little stroke here or something like that to just uh, break up some of that shape of the rose or come in like that to break that up a bit. And you can, so I, I don't always like curve, curve, curve. I like to have some lines in there. Now, let's come out here, back up towards that, back towards that value eight or so, always having that, that, um, chart right here with you so you don't get too white that's the problem a lot of people get is I want this eight see I'm running I wanted an eight and that's right where I was an eight maybe lean a little bit towards the nine now here's the bottom of the bowl here's where my stem would come in and sometimes I tell students just to go ahead and put a stem in and then you have a target and you're just going to 
you're just going to stroke in towards where that bowl is going to be, where that stem is going to come in there. Now I can have just a touch more water with that. When you get this granulation, this dry to your stroke, that means you're a little bit dry. So two or, th two or three strokes to make the petal there. Then just push it lightly like this while that's still a little bit damp and create that that uh, nice intermediate transition tone but always push in the way that that petal is growing there okay so let's add a bit more now i'm going to slight i'm going to go one way like this and slightly curve notice how i'm turning in like this and that kind of turns the rose petal here so it, it goes this way this way this way so it's pulling in pulling this way pulling this way that's what we call a transitional petal and then I'll push in and out a bit. And if you don't want to push in and out, go back and make that half tone. But pushing in and out works really well. Let's just take a little bit more of this. Now as I come around, I want to follow that circle. Don't violate that circle. Kind of follow that circle. Let's push one right in there like that and push in and out. That creates that softness of it. Maybe a little bit smaller back here, just a bit of one and push in and out like that. That just gives a little rose to the back back there. And let's take just a little more water. Maybe cool this down. Drop its value down. Add a little bit of your red violet right over here. This cools down a bit. Sometimes I'll even, when I get real casual, you see me do painted simply casual flowers, I'll just pull out and let it really granulate out. And just, just push like that. And push out here like that, nice and casual. It's on the shadow side. This gets the petals get lost and very wispy out over there. Okay, so now I have a bowl petal and I have a reaching petal, and now I've got a petal in between. So now I have this petaling area here in between, and what I'm going to do is lighten up again. Okay, I don't want it quite so cool. So let's get a little warm in there. Sometimes I'll even put a little yellow in there. Just like that, I love some of those colors. We gotta go up towards our nines here now and up towards our 10, so up almost to white or a tinted white here, okay? Now this is where I can put a larger petal here. Sometimes I'll add another row of petals pulling in. So there's stroke flowers that I do what I call two. So it'd be like here, one, two, and then two on here, and then a chisel. And that fills up a rose really nice. Sometimes I just fill up mostly with bowl petals. Here I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna add just one more row here of lighter petal here, and push in and out like that. And let's add another row right here of the light petal. Push in and out with the direction you want that to go maybe just a little bit of that because it's heading to the shadow side. So I just push like that. So I'm pulling in, always imagining where that stem would be. And that's kind of where I'm just pulling in and I can put a lot of texture. Sometimes I paint with lots of texture, sometimes not very much. I can soften this with a half tone. I can come in here and push a half tone in there and soften that out. I can just push with my finger and keep that movement. I, I do both. But the thing is, the shape, the petals are getting a little smaller. Here's your biggest petals. Those are your most adult. They're getting a little smaller as I'm coming back towards the bowl. Now I'll pick up just mostly white here. And I'll just angle a petal in here like that. Sometimes I... so Now when I angle a petal in here like that, I can push to the bowl or I can push to the the bottom here. So if I push to the bottom, almost rounding this down like that, this becomes a little bit of a bowl petal here. And all I'm looking for is the movement. I might pull down just a bit here like that. So I get a nice pretty movement right there into that bowl here. And sometimes I'll point it up a little bit more. So I, I turn, I mean, so the, the rose gets a little different shape to it. There's a lot of different ways, and so in all of the exercises, you'll see some different ways in which I set the roses. Here I just round like this, just put a little bit in there like that, and I just want to push it into the bowl. Just push that bowl shadow in like that, and just catch the movement, because I'm heading to the shadow side here. I don't want to show too much. Now, 
do you you know if you need to reset a shadow or if you lost some of your shadow just take a little bit of your shadow color and lift up like that and reestablish it any time you'll see me in many lessons and books and everything you'll see me say re restate reestablish restate your shadow if you need to get your shadow back in there because that bowl shadow is so important to the shape of this rose here Okay, it's so important. And sometimes just leave the movement. Leave that little bowl movement. It looks like, you know, you can come in here and stroke out like that. It looks like little petals onto that side. It makes it pretty. Now, let's wipe our brush. Let's go a little bit more white. And maybe sometimes I will just come in here like this and chisel a petal in like that. And maybe I'll, this time, I'll push the bowl up onto the top like that so that becomes more of a a reaching type petal a petal that goes to the outside there of that bowl pull that in like that so the bowl let's put a little bit of our pink bowl color in will come around like that you can push that around okay maybe round this one up right here a bit always looking for that roundness and there's a a thousand ways you can petal this rose. So I'm just going to add just a little bit more here like that and push in and out. So if I am painting a reaching petal, petal coming out of the bowl, I push in and out this way. If I'm painting a bowl petal, I round it and push it up and up and down that way. And I lost just a bit of this one, so I'll just restate the light onto that one again. And let those just kind of come together there like that let that movement just kind of come together but you can still see a bit of that bowl right in there and that's the most important part now sometimes with some roses not all lessons that's your basic rose how i paint the basic rose do you do one two one two and then one or you know that doesn't make a difference that's your basic rose you just fill up as many petals as you can now sometimes i come back i'll pick up some of my light color and I'll come in here and I'll add a little tip, just a little bit of light like that. Now, you can soften that with the push. Sometimes that's a little difficult to do that. So I'll go back here and this nice summer heat is drying this up a bit. So I'll add just a bit of water to my original gray and just soften that just ever so much. Just a little bit right there. So sometimes I come back, pick up just a little bit of light here. And just touch a little bit of light. And that makes a real pretty little rose. Right like that with little light. Little light highlights here. Little more highlight to the light side. And then leave that to the shadow side here. And it makes it real pretty. When I want to do small things, I just push into the paint just a bit like that. Just pick up a little bit of that light. And pull that in. And uh, that gives you a nice little, nice little set. Now, that's basically how I paint a nice uh, you know a nice casual rose and, and like I say you can you can make it more complex you can make it simpler you know you can make it real simple and when I get to buds and stuff like that in some of the other lessons you'll see me make it very simple here I take a little black and green that makes your base uh, excuse me a black and yellow that makes your base olive green I like to add a little warmth to that sometimes a little touch of the cool color here it makes you almost like a, a nice burnt sienna real brownish kind of color that makes pretty colors here for for stems here like this and I might just stem up some of this and just push stems around I like to do that just use the chisel sometimes I'll come through with more little stems and stuff off of that real real chisel you can uh, you know use your leaves you can change this right over to leaves how we do leaves we take a little yellow and a little black sometimes a little blue if i want more of those blue green leaves and stuff but the 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 greens the you know real casual beautiful greens here are basically come from this olive green is what i use a lot in paintings but i'll make a green like that We'll learn about your leaves. Your leaves are just an oval shape, so I usually just pull down. And then I widen out my oval, pulling in. I always like to leave a little space there of that background. That's just part of the technique I like to do. And then I just I leave it like that. Then I just drag my finger through and lift off 
So I get a little light side and a little shadow side. And it's a real, it's an, it shears that paint really nice. It looks pretty good, you know, for a, for a leaf like this. You can put a lighter color or a little shadow color here. I'll put a little bit of brown out for a little stem right there into that. But uh, that looks pretty good. Sometimes I'll thin the color out with a little water like this, and, and that will make them a little softer. See how that's a little softer there? And that'll make, and I do different types of leaves like that and just pull down, pull down. And you can see I get a light side and a shadow side to that real easy. Now you can, like I showed you in negative painting and stuff, you can come in here and negative paint around the back edge of this rose here. Maybe just pull out some of the color there like this. Just negative paint around, Fall, you know, draw the shape of a, a you know, a more precise little petal there. And that looks pretty nice as well. You can use all different kinds of colors. And that's the beautiful thing about painting like this. Very casual. You know, we can even put a little pink and stuff into this. Let's thin this out a bit. Here, not too much on my brush. I'll wipe some off. And just push some casual color back through here. Back like that. And that just moves... This is what I like to do. I, it's like enhances the movement of your background and and uh, just light transparent like this. So you're using the water to help some of your transparency give a little bit of movement there. Sometimes I'll pull a little bit of light right up there from the front of that. But um, a lot of times you just, you know, we're just painting a simple little rose composition here. This is your basic rose. And so I'll rinse my brush off here. And so you have, when you look at your rows through here, you have your three circles. One, two, and three. You have a light side and a shadow side to it. It's just a basic part of building the rows like that. How many times you pedal? You can put on just a bowl pedal and then just reaching pedals. I do that in some of the the um, uh, painted simply the early books, painting impression books. Uh, Painting Impressions Volume 1 and 2, and I show you some basic blossoms and basic roses. And in those books, I, you know, I'll petal a rose just once, and you see strokes and petal a rose once or petal twice. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and that's one of the things that we have here in Painted Simply. One of my jobs is to give you the technical uh, techniques, the, tec the technical part of it, using sheer, using half tones, finding these techniques. And then how you go about petaling a rose is going to become part of your signature as an artist, okay? And so there's no just one way you want to kind of fill up this rose. You fill up a lot of petals, you make it look like a mum. But that's how you paint a mum as well. There's a lot of things that we'll do. We'll head over after some of these lessons. We head over into the exercises, and I'll be showing you more advanced paintings and everything. And we'll show you some different ways. You'll see some fun ways to uh, to petal different roses. We'll try some different colors and some different things as well. But this is your basic, basic rose here. Of course, you can make it more basic. You can make it really basic. And just stop right where, like I did, like six minutes into the video. And that rose, it's still a beautiful rose, okay? But we're going to show you all different kinds of ways to petal. That's what makes the rose different, all right? Okay, so that's your basic rose, painted pure acrylic. You look at it, it looks like it's painted in oils, doesn't it? Looks exactly like it's painted in oils, and it's not. It's painted with acrylic, and it's painted just using the values using your value scale and controlling your colors that way. All right, okay, let's go over and let's do some more.